The following mystic poem was composed in the second century by Valentinus of Alexandria, Egypt. A rare passage, one of the few surviving quotes from Valentinus. It's called Summer Harvest. In the spirit I see all suspended. In the spirit I know everything held. The flesh hanging from the soul, the soul held aloft by the air, the air suspended from the ether. Fruits manifest themselves out of the depth. A child emerges from the womb. I saw a newborn child and questioned it to find out who it was, and the child answered me, saying, I am the Word. I am the Word. I am the Word. Spiritual masters teach that in our beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the song of the Creator. In the beginning was the Om. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Logos. In the beginning was the music of the spheres. In the beginning was the Santi Sarmad. In the beginning was the Tao. In the beginning was the Anhad Shabad. In the beginning was the Nam. The audible life stream, the sound current. the divine voice saying, let there be, and all became. This reading may sound familiar to some. At the end I'll reveal what it's from. Remember the forgotten melody, the ancient song that will take you home. Listen, perhaps you catch a hint of an ancient state not quite forgotten dim perhaps and yet not altogether unfamiliar like a song whose name is long forgotten and the circumstances in which you heard completely unremembered not the whole song has stayed with you but just a little wisp of melody attached not to a person or a place or anything particular but you remember from just this little part how lovely was the song, how wonderful the setting where you heard it, and how you loved those who were there and listened with you. Listen, and see if you remember an ancient song you knew so long ago and held more dear than any melody you taught yourself to cherish since. Beyond the body, beyond the sun and stars, past everything you see, and yet somehow familiar is an arc of golden light that stretches as you look into a great and shining circle and all the circle fills with light before your eyes. This is the vision of the Son of God whom you know well. Here is the sight of him who knows his Father. Here is the memory of what you are, a part of this, with all of it within and join to all, as surely as all is joined in you. Accept the vision that can show you this, and not the body. You know the ancient song, and know it well. Nothing will ever be as dear to you as this ancient hymn of love. The Son of God sings to his Father still. And now the blind can see for that same song they sing in honor of their Creator gives praise to them as well. The blindness that they made will not withstand the memory of this song, and they will look upon the vision of the Son of God, remembering who He is they sing of. What is a miracle but this remembering? A passage from A Course in Miracles, Chapter 21, Reason and Perception. Reason in Greek is sometimes translated as the word logos, which brings us back to the word. 
A child emerges from the womb and says, I am the Word. The unseen gives birth to the seen. Silence gives birth to meditation. Meditation gives birth to wisdom. Formlessness gives birth to form. The unseen realm is where our world of form comes from, where it springs from. The Sufi mystic and philosopher Ibn Arabi wrote in his Bezels of Wisdom, He, Allah, brought the cosmos into being as constituting an unseen realm and a sensory realm, so that we might perceive the inner through our unseen faculties and the outer through our sensory aspect. Abin Arabi. We are children of both worlds, in other words. We human beings are, in other words, or other worlds. We human beings are a tree of life with roots in the earth and branches rising into a mystic sky. Rumi says, everything you see has its roots in the unseen world. The forms may change yet the essence remains the same. Every wonderful sight will vanish, every sweet word will fade, but do not be disheartened. The source they come from is eternal, growing, branching out, giving new life and new joy. Why do you weep? The source is within you, and this whole world is springing up from it. Bawa Muhayyadeen, a Sufi mystic says, there is an unseen light within you which the eyes cannot perceive. It dwells within you and you within it in unity. That's from the golden words of a Sufi sheikh by Bawa Muhayyadeen. George Arnsby Jones, someone I enjoy quoting quite frequently, once said, the plains of heaven are about us everywhere. One has only to know this simple truth consciously, and then we will be free. Seeing the unseen within. Sufis use the term the unseen. The Sufis call it the unseen to refer to God. They use the term unseen. And the invisible dimensions, the invisible dimensions of the spiritual domain uh, are called the unseen. And yet also say at the same time, by the light of Allah, I see Allah. In Gnosticism, God is called the great invisible spirit and also has a strong visionary component of mystical practice with the goal of becoming divinized by the light of God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, is an often quoted passage. A Catholic manual of contemplation called the Cloud of Unknowing describes a divine darkness and unknowing that veils God from physical sight of material eyes. Some contemplatives within Eastern Christianity are labeled light mystics. Their goal is to see the unseen, to know the unknown, to contemplate the divine light with another kind of sight, another kind of vision, the single eye, the third eye. Over the centuries, contemplative souls have taught that the human body is a kind of sacred temple, and that within this temple are portals that lead to other dimensions that by looking within this microcosm we may access the macrocosm of the cosmos, the heavens, the multiverse. The Sufi mystic and philosopher Ibn Arabi wrote in his Bezels of Wisdom, He, Allah, brought the cosmos into being as 
constituting an unseen realm and a sensory realm so that we might perceive the inner through our unseen faculty and the outer through our sensory aspect. We are indeed children of both worlds. We come from the unseen. We seem to have the impression based on our outer senses that we are living in the realm of the seen. But part of our birthright, part of our heritage, part of our potential as human beings, as souls who have incarnated into bodies, is an ability to see the unseen, to, through meditation practice, access the third eye center and contemplate the divine light and other visions of inner space, and to hear the word, the logos, the music of the spheres. We as human beings can access that realm, that unseen realm, or subtle realm, within us through meditation. Even now, during this present life, any time we wish to access it by way of contemplative meditation, my eyes have turned inward, says St. Nam Dev, one of my favorite saints and poets of India. My eyes have turned inward. My heart clings to the feet of God. My heart clings to the feet of Ram. I worship only God within, nothing else, says Nam Dev. Experience the state of superconsciousness where the Lord's love surges, and you will see your own form in each particle of creation, says Nam Dev. If you thirst, you drink water from a cup. You see God in it. Those who are not in love with God will see only their own faces in it. They will see only their own faces in it, says Rumi. Love bestirs the heart of the separated lover for God, and God responds by enlightening him or her. He then realizes that the soul and God are one, a verse from Kabir, from something called the Thirty Gems of Kabir, one of many books of Kabir. This is our birthright, our heritage, our potential as human beings even now. We can see the unseen, we can access, we can come to know ourselves once again. We can hear that ancient melody referred to in the quote I shared earlier from A Course in Miracles. We are the soul that has incarnated here. We are the Word, as Valentinus described so well in his second century composition known as Summer Harvest. Valentinus of Alexandria describes the human condition when humans feel uh, unaware of that divine realm and are cut off from that and are left only with a material existence, it's kind of a dream and really, historically, kind of a nightmare. This is a reading from the Gospel of Truth, one of the Nag Hammadi books discovered in Upper Egypt, attributed to Valentinus of Alexandria. Either they are fleeing somewhere, this is describing the dream of humanity or a nightmare of the human condition typically, or all too often. Either they are fleeing somewhere or they lack strength to escape when being pursued, they are involved in inflicting blows, or they themselves are receiving bruises, they are falling from high places, or they fly through the air with no wings at all. Other times it is as if certain people were trying to kill them even though there is no one pursuing them, or they themselves are killing those beside them and they are stained by their blood. Until the moment when they who are passing through all of these things, I mean 
they who have experienced all these confusions, all of these dreams, awaken. They see nothing because the dreams were nothing. It is thus that they who cast ignorance from them like sleep do not consider it to be anything, nor regard it regard its properties to be something real, but they renounce them like a dream in the night, and they consider the knowledge of the Father to be the dawn. It is thus that each one has acted as if asleep during the time of ignorance, and thus a person comes to understand as if awakening, and happy is the one who comes to himself and awakens says Valentinus of Alexandria in the Gospel of Truth. Uh, people often report dreams where, where they are flying, and that even got worked into this paragraph. They think they're flying, they're being pursued, they're pursuing others, they're just caught up in all of this uh, nonsense of the dream, in this uh, matrix of creation, and then they wake up and realize it was all just a dream. It was all absolutely nothing. Nothing real to it at all. And blessed is the one who comes to himself and awakens from this ignorance, from this dream, from this soul slumber of the ages. Blessed is the one who comes to himself and awakens. Says Valentinus of Alexandria in the Gospel of Truth. This is also from the Gospel of Truth by Valentinus. When the pearl is cast down into the mud, it becomes greatly despised. Nor if it is anointed with oil, will it become more precious. But it always has value in the eyes of its owner. Compare the sons of God wherever they may be. They still have value in the eyes of their father. Valentinus of Alexandria, the Gospel of Truth. I think of that. I, I'm I'm very much into astronomy, and uh, as I read that, I just think of that in a very sentient life form, expanded definition of what it is to be human or what it means to be a conscious sentient being and just kind of expand that on out right through the cosmos and not just limit it to earth so wherever you may be in the cosmos you still have uh, value and have not really lost yourself at all the pearl may be in the mud but it's still a pearl and that is the good news, you might say. The soul remains a soul wherever it is, whether it knows itself or not. It's still a soul. Whatever dream it's caught up in, whatever planet it's inhabiting, whatever century it happens to be trapped in, it's still a soul. It's still a pearl. It still has value. The value does not go down just because it's got some mud on it and you can't see it really well it's still there perhaps obscured by matter and yet it's still a pearl and that's very much the mass the master's uh, message the message of all the masters about the value of the soul the pearl of great price the hem of the pearl which I sometimes quote also. After the break, recovering the pearl of the soul that has been embedded in the mud of creation, in whichever solar system you want to focus on, probably this one, recovering the knowledge of the soul, the true identity of each and every person, every conscious sentient being, and the process of meditation 
and the process of the ascension of the soul back to that ultimate state of consciousness again where the soul says I am the word as Valentinus said in his poem Summer Harvest the name of the program is Spiritual Awakening Radio stay tuned for more after these messages here on HealthyLife.net Positive Talk Radio Spiritual Awakening Radio continues. My name is James Bean, with you every week at this time, exploring the world of spirituality, comparative religion, the path of the masters, books of the East and West, sacred texts, readings, exploring interfaith studies, comparative religion, mysticism, meditation, spirituality. This is a reading from Valentinus of... Alexandria from his book known as the Gospel of Truth composed sometime during the second century a complete copy of it in the Coptic language which is similar to Greek was discovered in December 1945 along with 49 other books now known as books of the Nag Hammadi library and the Gospel of Truth is online along with all of those other books. So at the end of the program today, I'll give you a text message number and an email address, and uh, you can request a link to The Gospel of Truth or other books just like it. Uh, All of these writings are online at the Gnosis Library. This is from Valentinus, his Gospel of Truth. Those whose names he knew in advance were called at the end one whose name the Father has uttered has knowledge, and one whose name has not been spoken remains in ignorance. Indeed, how is one to hear if one's name has not been called? One who is ignorant until the end is a creature of oblivion. Therefore, if you have knowledge, you are from above. If you are called, you hear you answer and turn to him who is calling you and ascend to him and you know in what manner you are called having knowledge you will do the will of the one who called you you wish to be pleasing to him you receive rest or repose each one's name comes to him and you who hear your name called know where you come from and where you are going as the drunkard who has turned away from his drunkenness and having returned to himself has set himself aright. Gospel of Truth, Valentinus June Singer's commentary in her book A Gnostic Book of Hours Keys to Inner Wisdom Some people are endowed from their birth with the capacity to inquire the wisdom of the heart. Those who have this knowledge have been identified by the Father and will be called by name, that is, specifically and individually. These persons hear when they are called. They pay attention and they move in the direction of the one who calls. They appreciate the importance of having been called, and so they do what is asked of them. It may seem elitist to say that only certain people are destined for the gift of gnosis, of enlightenment or spiritual knowledge, but on a deeper level it is not. The possibility of being called may exist in any one of us. How then are we to know whether we are called to receive the knowledge of the heart? As with all gifts of grace and understanding, we only know that they are ours in the moment when we perceive 
they have been given to us. The call is such a gift. It is the still small voice within us that lets us know what is of significance and what is not what is true and what is false. It does not speak of socially acceptable values or consensual truths, but rather of the integrity of individuals both within themselves and in their relationships with others. Knowing one's name means that one is the same person in every relationship and in every situation. One does not veer away from one's sense of self for the sake of expediency or to gain favor from someone. Even if we are born with the capacity to be fully ourselves, we often lose sight of it. Gnosis comes through attention to the inner life, and this demands that we curb our obsessions with material possessions and sensual pleasures. Like strong drink, these may be acceptable in moderation, but when they become primary goals, they result in forgetfulness. As long as we sleep the sleep of oblivion, we will not be likely to hear when we are called. Asleep, we cannot know whether or not we are destined for gnosis. Awake, we may hear ourselves called to attention by the voice that reminds us, No place is empty of me, quote unquote. No place is empty of me. A Gnostic Book of Hours. June Singer's commentary on many texts, including the Gospel of Truth. The power of attention is a central principle in spirituality. Swami Sant Seviji Maharaj once quoted a Jain teacher, a teacher from Jainism saying, We have only one consciousness stream. When we associate with truth, we ascend upwards, and when we associate with untruth, we fall down. And this is from Edward Salam Michael, his book, The Law of Attention, Nada Yoga, and the Way of Inner Vigilance. In all truth, it can be said that the fall of the human being took place when he began to forget himself. That is to say, to forget his supreme being, the mysterious source whence he emerged. Isn't that fascinating? Edward Salam Michael, The Law of Attention. We fall when we forget our true identity and the source from whence we have emerged. And of course we come to remember who we are when we reverse that process and go from falling to rising or ascending again. And we say, I am the Word and reconnect with that Word and reconnect with that source. It's the, uh, the reversal of the fall of man. It is the ascension of the soul once again. You're hearing Spiritual Awakening Radio. Stay tuned for more after these messages. Valentinus of Alexandria described the human condition cut off from its true source and nature as being like a nightmare or illusion or dream. A dream that we can awaken from. Valentinus said, It is thus that they who cast ignorance from them like sleep do not consider it to be anything, nor regard its properties to be something real. But they renounce them like a dream in the night, and they consider the knowledge of the Father to be the dawn. It is thus that each one has acted as if asleep during the time of ignorance. 
and thus a person comes to understand as if awakening. And happy is the one who comes to himself and awakens, says Valentinus. Awakening from the dream and focusing attention on the divine. Kabir, one of my favorite mystics from India, said in one of my favorite Kabir books known as the Bijak, which means the treasure. His book, the Bijak, is like the treasure map to the treasure of the soul. In the Bijak, Kabir says, the three worlds are like a cage, virtue and vice, a net. Every creature is the prey, and the one hunter, death. They don't listen to wise words, and won't think for themselves, says Kabir. Kabir continues to scream. The world goes by like a dream. Within the five elements is a secret thing, a rare one finds the mystery, the proof, the master's teaching. If you know you're alive, find the essence of life. Life is the sort of guest you don't meet twice, says Kabir. The perfecting required by the disciple must be gained there where his karma has placed him. But he must progressively learn the value of renunciation of perishable things and find, even in success and terrestrial happiness, that bitterness by which he recognizes he is but an exile in the world, and to experience, even in the sweetest hours, the homesickness for a lost native land. That's from Julian Johnson's book, Path of the Masters. Speaking of the classic Gnostic theme of the exile of the soul, one comes to think of themselves as a stranger in a strange land, yearning for homecoming, to know where they are from, and a way to return there. They seek a way to return there again. This is from Maharishi Mehi Parmhans, his book, Philosophy of Liberation. The desire of an individual to be free from sufferings and to attain happiness of absolute peace is naturally present in the hearts of all. The purpose of the teachings of the masters is to provide a system which fulfills the desires of attaining absolute peace. And this is from Tukaram of Maharashtra, India, a great poet saint. Peace of mind is a sign of God's presence. And this reading comes from the Sikh scriptures of India, a hymn of Guru Nanak. The love of Maya or illusion is sweet to the world, but in the end this delusion is dispelled. So perform devotional worship, link your consciousness to the Supreme Being, and dispel anxiety from your mind. Nanak speaks the truth, focus your consciousness on God. O oh, my stranger soul, rivers and streams which separate may reunite sometime that rare person who centers his consciousness on the Satguru knows intuitively and realizes the Supreme Being. Nanak speaks the truth through the true word of the Shabad. Those long separated from the Supreme Lord are united once again. A passage from the Sikh scriptures, Sri Guru Granth. The soul's awakening from illusion. The mind has forgotten its real abode for many ages. Having clung to maya or illusion and its objects, it acts perversely. Unless it is fully purified, the inner eye will not open. However, elevation of the spirit shall continue on a subtle level. The path will thus be opened and cleared gradually. 
when the mind has been completely corrected, the surat, or the attention faculty of the soul, has acquired the strength to partake of the bliss of higher regions, the Supreme Being, the merciful Lord of the soul, Radhaswami Dayal, will graciously open the inner eye to some extent and vouchsafe sufficient strength. He will augment love a great deal. He will accelerate the inner progress of the spirit. He will inner he will accelerate the inner progress of the spirit. Thus the path will be easily traversed. It is only then that the soul will comprehend fully the eminence of the true eternal timeless supreme being merciful lord of the soul sat purush radhaswami dayal his word and mode of devotional practices he will attain freedom from care and intense bliss that's a paragraph from hazur maharaj rai Salagram from his book prem patra radhaswami about that point when the asleep soul starts to awaken more or less through divine grace more than their own individual effort although some effort will gradually come into existence in the life of our awakening soul and they will go from slumber to awakening they flip over at that point they start to awaken this is from Hazur Baba Sawan Singh. In the center between and above the eyes there is an aperture. On this side of it is the material world in which we are now living and on the other side is the astral world. More from Hazur Baba Sawan Singh and other readings after the break. Stay tuned for more Spiritual Awakening Radio coming up. This is more from Hazur Baba Sawan Singh. In the center between and behind the eyes is an aperture. On this side of it is the material world in which we are living now. And on the other side is the astral world. The word gives out both light and sound. At this end in the physical plane, the light and sound are lost in gross matter. On the finer planes, the subtle planes, astral, causal, and spiritual, sound is audible and light is visible. At the upper end, the sound is the finest music unheard by human ears, and the light is of millions of suns and moons in one ray. That's from Hazur Baba Sawan Singh. This is from the Sant Darya Sahib Mission website. The saints have advocated two paths for the attainment of nirvana. One, the path of gnosis, knowledge, direct spiritual experience. And two, the path of love and devotion for the Supreme Being, the path of bhakti. Human birth is most precious and it should not be lost in mere satisfaction of sensuous pleasures, accumulation of wealth, and wielding power. Human birth should be utilized for the realization of pad nirvan or God. If this opportunity is lost, none can say when one would be fortunate to get human birth again. Getting human birth is rare. That's from the Sant Doria website, Sant Doria Mission, devoted to the great saint, a medieval mystic by the name of Saint Darya Sahib of Bihar District, India. Once again, A Course in Miracles. Listen, perhaps you catch a hint of an ancient state not quite forgotten. Dim, perhaps, and yet not altogether unfamiliar. 
Listen and see if you remember an ancient song you knew so long ago and held more dear than any melody you taught yourself to cherish since. More on the ancient song and the power that it has to bring you to remembrance again. Attend to your meditation every day. When you persevere in this practice, divine grace will surely descend upon you. Moreover, the sound current, the celestial melody, is the very essence of the Supreme Being, and it is resounding within you all the time. When it pleases him to merge the soul with himself, he will do so in an instant. When the soul is as pure as the sound, there won't be even a moment's delay. Ever since the material world was created, the mind and soul have been gathering dirt. Never for a spell of ten or twenty years has the soul been fixed in the sound current for seven or eight hours. How can it then find a place in the heavenly melody so soon? Until the soul has intense longing for the sound day and night, how can it merge into the sound? Submit yourself and practice daily the technique imparted to you, because the sound current is anxious to purify your soul and mind without delay. The Shabda Satguru showers such grace and mercy that not even for a moment does he forget the time when the soul that he has awakened through the sound current will become pure so that by merging with it his sound current form can take it to the true eternal timeless spiritual realm there are other passages uh, from the same teacher who uh, is Baba Jamal Singh that passage was from Baba Jamal Singh there are other passages that say meditate in the silence on the inner sound if you can hear that sound that celestial melody for five minutes or four minutes three minutes two minutes or even a single minute that alone is a radical step that is a radical thing a great blessing that will greatly assist your existence it will greatly change your world even if you meditate on that sound for just 60 seconds. A word about Valentinus of Alexandria. I've shared a few passages this week from Valentinus. He lived during the second century, born in Egypt. He eventually relocated to Rome. He claimed to be a student of a spiritual master by the name of Thutis who in turn was a disciple of St. Paul the Apostle. So Valentinus saw himself as a master uh, in a lineage going back to St. Paul by way of his teacher, Thutis. He moved to Rome, and at one point he, he actually thought that he might be selected to become the Bishop of Rome, which is such a radical thing to learn about. Uh, the Valentinus almost became Pope. It's kind of almost outrageous. It's almost like saying the Dalai Lama was a contender for being Pope at one time. It's kind of a shocking thing to hear. And yet at that time, during the second century, Valentinians were not a separate sect, distinct and separate from Christianity. They were a kind of mystical, deeper life form of Christianity, they may have attended, uh, the followers of uh, Valentinus may have attended Mass. And then they had their own Sunday afternoon meeting at two, so to speak, had their own uh, uh, separate meeting. And so they, they, were, they were obviously unique and had some of their own teachings going on, uh, not so mainstream, and yet they were really uh, not driven out of Christianity. They were very much part of the scene there for couple of centuries. Most of those monks that went to Nag Hammadi probably were Valentinians, I, I suspect. 
To receive a link to The Gospel of Truth and other writings by Valentinus, send me an email at this address, james at spiritualawakeningradio.com, james at spiritualawakeningradio.com, or send me a text message at this number, 508-603-9381. 508-603-9381. Spiritual Awakening Radio is here every week at this time, exploring the world of spirituality, interfaith studies, comparative religion, and books, East and West. My name is James Bean. Thanks for listening. Thank you.